This is BYU Sports Nation, presented by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now live from Studio C, it's Spencer Linton and Jerem Jordan. BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Tuesday, July 26th, wherever and however you have chosen to connect. Great to have you with us. I am Spencer Linton, teamed up alongside a man who I can guarantee you would never take his own salad dressing to a restaurant. His name is Jerem Jordan. Yeah, I don't think I would do that, but uh, our friend in arms, Jason Shepard, <laughs> became that guy yesterday posting on social media. So I became bring your own salad dressing to a restaurant guy today. We do not, uh, I think, know which salad dressing he brought, but he became that guy. Was it Newman's own? <laughs> He's like, I really need Thousand Island. Lighthouse Ranch. Where at, uh, wherever I go. By the way, congratulations to you. And, and subsequently, we. I, I feel part of this team here. Okay. You got on the podium in the BYU TV employee ping pong tournament. Third place. Congratulations. That's this, awesome. This oh, was, we have a video. Look it was at this. Open every, so I specifically wore my Team USA soccer jersey. <laughs> 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 Had to brush a little dirt off my shoulder after a nice shot. Yep. Uh, oh. Yeah, the Matrix wasn't always great to me in that slow motion replay, but I knew that I had these matching wristbands and headband. Yes. They would match my soccer jersey. Why do you have those? Because America. Yeah. <laughs> it's America. It's July, right? It's so America you, month. You lost the semis and then won the third, fourth place? Yes. Is that what happened? Yes. Awesome. Beat our friend Link to get third place. Which was, a, which was a big deal for me. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. That was a big deal and for me. T- it's a big deal to win, always. And Todd <laughs> Allen won. Todd Allen is what it, He's always Todd wanted to be on BYU Sports Nation. Congratulations. Here's, here's his, you made it, Todd. All we needed you to do was be awesome. We had to win a are, ping pong tournament. But we couldn't talk about, like, you know, accounting uh, to get on the show. So here we are. Congra- yep. Oh, listen, that's two days in a row where the guns are being shown off. Hanging from Lagoon. Yeah, hey. <laughs> my you, my you bronze work, medal in the BYU TV Open Ping Pong You must work out. Nice. Oh, uh, yeah, hardly. Nice. Uh, I'm working on that. What's that I, accent? I am, I am working Austria? on Austria? <laughs> Your show lineup. Nice. Good enough for a third place finish, we hope, today. <laughs> if, if not We'd better. take a third in a regional heavenly <laughs> right now. Right well, now. Let's do better than third place. Like, first place, as in the number one revenge game or opportunity on BYU's 2022 football schedule. What do you have circled? What's your number one revenge game? And because it's Top 5 Tuesday and we're talking about vengeance, why not the top five revenge wins all time in BYU football Ooh. history? Plus, Blaine Fowler, Uncle B, joins the program to discuss all of that, his schedule superlatives, some schedule superlatives in general from national writers, and it's still Jimmer Watch because of the basketball tournament. Mm-hmm. Bring on today's BYU Sports Station headlines. College football award watch list season continues. Peyton Wilgar is on the Bronco Nagurski Trophy watch list for best defensive player. Congratulations to Peyton. And Clark Barrington and Blake Freeland are on the Outland Trophy watch list given to the nation's best interior linemen. Now, for some reason, exterior linemen are included in this, but all linemen are apparently interior. That's what I learned from this because Blake Freeland's a tackle. Okay. He's on the outside or exterior. And he's an exterior okay. lineman. It's all good. Hey, we're inclusive of As all of, linemen. Of all linemen. Of all linemen. Exactly. All 32 NFL teams have now reported to their specific team training camps. As of this morning, including Fred Warner with the San Francisco 49ers, Zach Wilson and the New York Jets, Kyle Van Noy and his new team, the Los Angeles Chargers of San Diego. Also, Tomasi Laulile participated in a free agent workout with Fred Warner's 49ers yesterday. That pick, uh, well, scoop and score he had in 2015 against Utah yeah. State. Yes. I'll never forget it because the clock runs out. So it's like, he has to score. This is nothing. Yes. And he scored. It Thank awesome. you, Chucky Keaton. <laughs> Chucklebury. <laughs> Wait, was he still in that game that year? He was, I believe he, he was, was the forever. quarterback in Jeez. 2015. Yes. Jimmer Fredette and the money team. Play tonight, 7 Eastern on ESPN2 or The Deuce, depending on how, how old you are. In the round of 32 in the basketball tournament against Men of Mackey, a Purdue alumni team that I believe includes Robbie Hummel. So this should be a fun matchup. I miss the all lowercase cursive writing-ish, that font from the original ESPN2. It was like, oh, yeah, it was yeah, like yeah. the extreme sports. Yes. It was like, we have the X Games and other countries. <laughs> well, bring it back. Bring it back, ESPN. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. 
You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending presented by Bodyguards, protection for a life worth living. Learn more at bodyguards.com. We have revenge. Payback. Oh, boy. Vengeance on the mind today as we look at the BYU football 2022 schedule and ask this question, which Jerem and I will answer shortly. What is the biggest revenge game on BYU's upcoming schedule? To me, it's Baylor because that's the only game BYU was not really in last year, uh, outmanned in that one, uh, out physical. So I'm excited to see that matchup. Remember, too, Baylor was really good. They lost a bunch of draft picks. They had a running back that was uh, equal to Tyler Algerian yards, almost exactly the same amount of yardage. Um, it's a Big 12 preview, right, with Baylor, which is exciting. Uh, Going to play them probably on the reg uh, more often. And Baylor won the Big 12. Like, they, are, they were a great team last year. BYU played multiple Power 5 champs in Utah and Baylor. Beat Utah, obviously. Did not beat Baylor. This reminds me as well of 83 and 84 that we've chronicled quite a bit on this show where in 83, BYU only loses one game. It's to Baylor. It's a one-score game. It's late. It's the season opener. BYU wins the rest of the games with Steve Young. Incredible year. 1984, Baylor comes to Provo and just gets smashed. I, I feel like with the home opener against Baylor and undoubtedly Dave McCann's flyover happening, <laughs> it will be so exciting and fun coming off a, another revenge win against South Florida. More on that in a moment. To have the Baylor Bears in town for a revenge game. Yeah. There's a lot there. Obviously, Jeff Grimes and Eric Mateo's connections uh, ring loud as well. So, to me, it's the Baylor Bears. Thankfully, Baylor's not going to bring in a star running back as well. They'll bring in some big boys up front. Sure. But not, they're not bringing in a star running back, and we're hoping that BYU brings in their own version of a star running back in Christopher Brooks, who's trying to replace Tyler Algier. I like that pick. I like that game. I like the home opener. There will be a ton of emotion. But for me, I have to go back to what was spoiled last season and why it was spoiled last season. Boise State ruined BYU's chances of making a New Year's Six Bowl game last year. Single, almost single-handedly ruined that opportunity. BYU was 5-0. and It started so well, didn't Ranked it? Ranked 10th in this game. You're a top 10 team going in. <laughs> what? Boise State was 2-2. Two and two. They were kind of meandering. We weren't really sure what they were. And we thought, oh, man, BYU's offensive line is going to pummel Boise State up front. They didn't. They absolutely did not. Granted, Jaron Hall was playing injured, and Baylor Romney couldn't play because he was concussed the week before against Utah State. Yes. So maybe if you have a healthy quarterback – BYU beats Boise State, no problem. But Perhaps but it, fumbling the ball is the real issue. Well, and Hank Bachmeyer was the real Hank difference. Hank Bachmeyer right. is the greatest quarterback in the history of this or any other planet. Boise State According cost Boise. BYU a New Year's Six opportunity. Yeah. And the chance to go 6-0 and heading to Baylor. And so instead and of going to Baylor 10. and Waco riding that, hey, super high of six straight wins and, yeah, you're number eight or number nine in the country, now you kind of – are questioning yourselves because it's like we just lost to a mediocre Boise State team. We kind of got to find ourselves. And Baylor took advantage of BYU. It was a two-game losing streak. But at the end of the season, Boise State cost BYU millions of dollars in a New Year's Six bowl game opportunity. Well, they paid uh, BYU back for 2019. Uh, yeah, yeah. Indeed. BYU was two and four in that game. BYU took that opportunity playing from Boise. Baylor Romney, uh, playing uh, Sione Finau at running, playing uh, a young group. It was rainy. They were ranked 14th. They had a better shot at the New Year's Six than BYU probably did in this situation just by a little bit with G5 access. But, I, yeah, I, that's an interesting pick, too, because it's a rival. It's the way all the things you said. I'm not sure BYU beats Baylor. Do they compete better? Losers talk about margin the next week at Baylor. Maybe. But maybe. But, like, I think BYU still lose that game. That, like, Baylor was better than BYU last year. But now they come to Provo. Now they've lost a bunch of guys, starting quarterback, starting running back, uh, two NFL receivers. Abram Smith, by the way, was the running back. Incredible. Uh, two yeah, safeties. Oh, no, Abram like, Smith. They lost a lot. Cool. BYU did not. BYU is in the middle of this uh, golden stretch, right, with incredible quarterback play and offensive line play and running back play and so on. So I, I, I'm convinced BYU wins the Baylor game. Uh, and maybe, I don't know if it's handily, but they win, right? Oregon is uh, the question, but yeah, Baylor, Boise State. There's a lot on this uh, on this schedule that's actually 
uh, as what uh, you know, Iron Man said. We're not the Revengers. We're the Avengers. No, BYU football's the, the BYU football, Revengers. Yeah, they this might year. be the Revengers this year. Like seriously, you alluded to it with USF and a couple of other teams in there. We've already mentioned Baylor and Boise State for very specific reasons. Those are at the top of our respective list. But we can make a case for like every team on BYU's schedule in 2022. I'm not kidding. And it starts with USF in how many days? Countdown to the Bulls. 39 days. 39 days away. Did everyone fast from yesterday to today? We're nope. about five and a half weeks. Five and a half weeks from a game. <laughs> Not the start of fall camp. We ain't talking about practice. From a game. Okay, you mentioned it. Every, every Let's team. Let's walk through the yes. entire schedule and why there's a revenge factor on each one. Okay, well, Jaron Hall leads the charge in game number one because he 100%. made his first start in Tampa in 2019 at USF. He left the game with BYU leading. He was concussed. Yes. And BYU ends up losing to a 4-8 and eight Bulls team that fired their head coach, Charlie Strong. Yeah, they and weren't the good. And the Florida curse continued. Yeah, this is a big revenge game. Jaron Hall's been thinking about this one for a long time. This was the bottoming Jer out, Jaron, for BYU before yes. they turned the corner against Boise State and things changed. Yes, 100%. Also, just a reminder that Jaron Hall didn't play in this game last year either Yeah. against South Florida. He hasn't had his revenge. No, no revenge for Jaron Hall. Okay, Baylor we mentioned. Oregon. Oregon is a, a revenge game because Oregon let Utah win twice last year and go to the Rose Bowl. Also, how you dare are, you, Puddles? You ain't got to win over Oregon this morning. If you know, you know. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Don't let the Utes go to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, there's some payback there. Also, if you want to go back to 1990, Oregon handed Ty Detmer and BYU their first loss that season when the Cougars were ranked as high as number four. Well, I got to call out my parents. Uh, I was six, living in Portland. They did not take me to Eugene to the game. Mom, I love you, but that was a miss. Game number four, BYU hosting Wyoming. Now you think, well, why Wyoming? BYU beat Wyoming in the points that he Because Wyoming. Time. Because you're Wyoming and you made, you had the audacity <laughs> to make BYU ever have to travel to Laramie. Okay? Like, because you how settled dare you? in Laramie. <laughs> okay. Utah State. Uh, because Aggies, also because they think their creamery is better than uh, BYU's. And those so. are fighting words. That, <laughs> those them, are fighting words. Them is fighting words. Oh, your creamery. You put your creamery up against BYU's Listen, creamery. Listen, when your number one on. argument is the creamery, we've already won. <laughs> okay. Hey, game number six, Notre Dame. This oh. is obvious. Oh, this, so much, yes. thanks, thanks for playing in Provo, Notre Dame. How dare you? The this, revenge is because BYU now has to go to Las Vegas and play a road game with majority Notre Dame fans in Allegiant State. Well, at least the tickets were cheap. But I... I <laughs> I, I love that BYU got this game and got paid, okay, period. But, yes, there is some rancor mm -hmm. with this situation sure. with the fans. You I, to, I totally get it. You want to go back to actual games? Well, Notre Dame beat BYU in 2012 and 2013, too. Yes. 90, so so the, that's looming as well. <laughs> Arkansas. Notre now, Dame. you think Ar BYU has no tie with Arkansas. No ties. They never played so a we're game good, against right? Arkansas. They're coming to Provo. No, no, this is a revenge game. And you're associated with Tennessee, and Tennessee hosed BYU. SEC, yes. Also, only Mississippi State has ever come here. Now you will draw the ire and rancor of BYU for being associated with Tennessee. By the way, this, this game scares, uh, scares me to death because it's coming on the heels of Notre Dame. We'll, we'll I, have I, our... I, am, I am scared of the emotional output that BYU is yeah. going to put into that game that this is a trap okay. game. Yeah, this is a trap. And we'll have you see you bring I like superlatives. We'll we'll discuss this leading up to the season. Yes. The quote unquote scariest game, most nerve wracking game. Biggest trap game. Biggest game. Sneaky. Uh, yes. Yeah, I think we've done game. the sneakiest best game. Yes. We'll best do. road trip. We'll do all of that. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Liberty. Liberty is a revenge game for claiming to have a more strict honor code than BYU. <laughs> well, BYU Idaho probably has that. You can't even wear shorts on campus. But yes, no, we have a stricter. Honor code than you. East Carolina. Hopefully not. Merely Jerem for being the oh. first of the inexplicable losses for BYU in 2017 in the Cougars' worst season in 50 years. They gave up 50 points a game and 600 yards going into that game. BYU scored 16. 19? 19. BYU scored Brigham. 19 that game? I don't care. BYU lost. Yeah, that they didn't one, score enough. That, that one hurts. Okay, we already mentioned Boise State. Yep, the Bachmeyer game. Okay, 
I think both my. Utah Tech, uh, frankly, you make it complicated to know what your school name actually is. Well, days. like, now we do, but it was Polytech after Dixie. And the, the, why'd you make it complicated? Uh, okay. Why Stanford, though? And then, well, Stanford is for nabbing all this LDS talent uh, that, uh, okay. that, that BYU We got one back. Wanted. Houston Haymooley. We got one We got back. one back. Yes, we did. <laughs> Maybe more in the future. He's going to score the game-winning touchdown. <laughs> That would be awesome. <laughs> He's going to get so much love, though. Yes. Flex on him, Houston. Our question of the day, what's the biggest revenge game on BYU football schedule in the 2022 season? Let's go to Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Jay Law Smith on Twitter answers. <laughs> I've never heard them called this. <laughs> Got to be the blue turfers. Boise State. Let's use that one more. Yes. No excuse for that loss at home, speaking of last year. Yep. Going into the Big 12, this is the year to start taking care of business like a top-tier Power 5. A reminder that BYU lost more G5 than P5 games last year. Like, how wild weird, is that? Right? One to two. How wild is that? This is the last opportunity for BYU to play Boise State True. for the foreseeable future. True. You want that last word, you know? And it's on the blue turf. Why not pay it back after they cost you potentially millions and a New Year's Six opportunity last year. Pay it forward, you know. Ryan Lanning on Twitter says, I want to beat up on Notre Dame so they really know playing in Provo would have ended even <laughs> worse. <laughs> and it's always fun beating Utah State and Boise State. Yes. For rivalry's sake. Rival and those kind of go away a little bit here soon, you know. Yeah. Utah State, same reason same as Boise. Same reason State. as Boise. Got to yeah. win that one. Coming up, how different would life be if BYU was invited into the Pac-10 in the 90s? Who said that? Okay. Plus, Uncle B, Blaine Fowler, joins us. Which game does he think deserves the title of BYU's biggest revenge opportunity? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Bodyguards. Protection for a life worth living. luxurious blanket getting cozy with family and friends a gift for everyone minky couture official luxury blanket of byu athletics Accidents don't just happen nine to five. They happen when you least expect them. The team at Siegfried and Jensen is here for you 24 seven. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour. Really here for you. No matter when you call us, you'll speak to a real person and have access to the same expertise and personal attention as always and get the legal help you need when you need it. Nights, weekends, every day, every hour, 24 seven. Learn more at SiegfriedandJensen.com. This is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on me. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Tyler Algier had an incredible 2021 season. Run Into History is the name of After Further Reviews episode tonight, 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app, as the guys look back at that incredible historic season for Tyler Algier. We are live in Studio C, not Studio B, Studio C. Thunder, it's getting renovated. We're excited. We are very excited. time in the history of the show. Let's go. For the time being, uh, yeah, we're in this cavernous, open, awesome area. And it is awesome. We're filling it up with more awesomeness because we now welcome in one of our all-time favorites, 
national champion quarterback, dual threat analyst. He is Uncle B, Blaine Fowler. Welcome back What's to up, BYU bro? USN. Good to see you guys. Hey, I'm excited. I, I don't know if you guys know this, but they hired me as an interior designer to design the new. For Studio B? Yeah. I'm, I'm well, all over I'm it. Well, I'm not worried. Hard. I'm all over it. No, I'm the one with all of the taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not worried. When, when you guys well, get in there, you're going to be Are you away. consulting with your wife, Brenda, though? Because that matters. Yeah, I ask her stuff. Well, okay. it is a little bit of a concern that I'm doing all the design, and I am colorblind. So that's, <laughs> that's a bit of a problem. Mild issue there. Thus the question about is Brenda yeah. consulting? So Brenda consults no on colors, like textures and design and all that. Like, I'm money. You're on it? Okay. When it comes to color, I'm like, hon, what color is that? Did the so, pink And slash by the way, every day that I get dressed, I... I have to go ask her, does this go with this? And she looks, sometimes she just goes, no. That's every <laughs> like, man, like, that's like, every man, like, Blaine. Not just, not just no, but oh my gosh, no. <laughs> like, how can you, even, can you not see clothes? I'm like, no, I cannot see them. So you can't go argyle with argyle with Chet. Emphatic. No. Yeah. yeah, it's it's like a disgusted no. So. <laughs> okay, so you've got strong arm game. I want you to break down yes. Spencer's flex here oh, boy. from the ping pong oh, yeah. tournament. I've heard I heard oh, about man. I've Recently. heard about the flex. Really? Yeah. Okay. Okay, but oh pretty good, right? Not size wise. <laughs> He's making progress. Uh -huh. um, that's where. That's where okay, we Okay, see the right arm. See that little vein that's coming across the forearm uh, and yes. attaches uh -huh. down to the fold of his arm. Yeah, that's good. That's a sign he's been working. He's okay. getting a little more. The, va the veins, the side. The little little vein thing is doing good. But <laughs> what about what, what about the overbite here? What, and that I don't. It looks. It looks like. Here's the thing. You got to make it look effortless. It was like a half flex with, with the with the teeth. Can I flex for thing? real? Is that better? Yeah, that looks better. Is that better? Actually, that better? Nice. With the okay. tooth thing, it makes it look like it's too much effort. It has to look easy. Mm. And then and then the other thing is, we're, we're, I'm gonna work on some definition rhythm. We got to do a little more okay, high right. reps, <laughs> and we're gonna do some flush sets. We're gonna do buddy curls. And because we're gonna get that peak to come out in his bicep with the buddy curls, mm. and buddy curls are like we just stand right across each other with a curling bar, mm -hmm. and I just do as many as I can do. I hand it to you, do as many, and we just keep mm -hmm. handing it back and forth for like six sets, till you get so pumped up. Then when you do this, okay, it's nothing. Then it looks like a blank. Nice. It's effortless, <laughs> and the veins are just they're just popping out. Working. So they're working progress. Yeah. Well, thanks for I may be colorblind, Blaine. but I but I can tell vascularity and the peak of biceps. Like <laughs> nobody you can see. Like no nobody. That's good. So. We've discussed more vascularity than I ever thought we would in the history. There's so <laughs> much <laughs> vascularity. Yeah. See, like we can get way. more we, we can peak those biceps up and make it look easier. I think we're gonna be in better shape. And then and then we're gonna get them we're gonna get them cut a little bit too with a little more wow. high rep work. So sounds like um, a lot of work. Do you wanna know what though? Not bad, actually. It's like I hadn't is seen. Is it, it good or is it not bad? It's 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 good. Tell me what it is. Not it's not what great. It is. It's, it's not it's, great. It's good. It's good. It's but remember, good is the enemy of great. It's true. I don't know who said that. Was that Jack Welch? <laughs> it was probably. Somebody said good is the enemy of great. Just say Winston. Churchill. You don't want to be satisfied with no, good. Spencer's no. looking for great. I don't want eight to nine wins for BYU football. No. I want ten plus. I want great. Well, it depends what year we're talking about. Yeah. If it's next year, I would take. I'll take nine. Eight. No, I'll, I'll take nine. Year. Eight to me is a little disappointment. I'll take if nine. BYU wins 11 games this year, I will hire Blaine as my personal trainer. That will happen. Mm. You don't even need is to hire expensive? me. <laughs> Just show up with me. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> Done. Uh, we're excited because there are a number of things happening. Not only are you here to help us out on BYU Sports Nation, but you're here to promote the season premiere of yes. After Further Review. And what people need to realize is when we premiere this, that means we're on the doorstep of fall camp. We're ready to go. Mm -hmm. Football season's here. 39 that, days for that, the first That's game. what it signals to us, and that's what it should signal to everyone else. We're ready to start doing previews. But the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look back. And we're going we're gonna to highlight every game of the season last year for Tyler Algier and talk about what a magical year it was and the impact that he had on this program. It was phenomenal. Uh, and... You know what the, the fun part is, is here we are really early in NFL camp. NFL camp's just getting going, and already Tyler's getting a lot of run with the media in Atlanta. They're already talking about could he be the most impactful rookie running back in the league this year. Um, and so, so I think it's great timing to talk about Tyler, and everybody needs to watch him. And, and the thing about, about Tyler is he works like a crazy man behind the scenes. He's phenomenal talent, but he's the most quiet, humble guy. And I think the play that, that illustrates more than any play who he is is the play against Arizona State where he, he just instinctively ran down the, the man that intercepted the ball, knocked it out, 
Zach recovered, or not Zach, uh, uh, Jaron recovered it. But then the reaction of Tyler after that. Do you guys remember what he did? Nothing. Got he, ready for he the just next walked play. off. He's like, he oh, went right. to the huddle. Like, okay, let's go. It's like, go. yep, yeah. that's what I was supposed to do. Therefore, I did it. Now we got the ball back. Let's go back to work. That's Tyler Algier in a nutshell. So we're so excited to kind of celebrate him in the show, in the show tonight. So If he's not great, BYU probably goes 8-5. and five. Like, oh, if he yeah. was good, 8-5. and five. Yeah. It took him to beat Utah State mm-hmm. and Washington State almost single-handedly. Yeah, it was he's – and remember, good is the enemy of great. He was great. That's I how think BYU Winston gets Churchill to, said yeah. that. That's crazy. Well, is that? I don't know who said it. Anybody that wants to tweet at us and tell us who said good is the enemy of great, because I don't know. I, yeah. I know I need to credit somebody for that statement, but I don't remember. Listen, you don't want to be this. It's a you want to be this. Actually, that's looking. You, you've made some progress since that picture for Pete's <laughs> sakes. He's over here pumping so. like while wow, we're doing the interview. <laughs> uh, good is the enemy of great is a book by Kurt Reese uh, Peoples. So there you go. Okay, very it's a good. Book title. I, I believe in the statement. I don't know about the whole book. I can't yeah. I can't recommend the book because I don't know it, but the statement I agree with. It's not Blaine approved. Okay, uh, our question of the day: biggest revenge game for BYU. There's a lot of games that have an element yeah. of this revenge. This is part of the path to greatness: yeah. handling the revenge games. No, and you got you guys you you covered uh, is here in studio listening as you guys went through, and there, there's a lot of reasons to get motivated for multiple games this season. I think I think South. You started with South Florida. The fact that it's just the first game is big, right? And it's it's on the road. And when they were on the road down there, I think that Jaron in particular has a chip on his shoulder about this game. He wants to come out and go, "Yeah, you knocked me out. Let me show you how you get knocked out." As Mama a team. gonna knock right? you. Right? You're, you're gonna. It's gonna be a two punch fight. Me punching you. Your head punching the floor. That's what it's gonna be. <laughs> and so. <laughs> two punch fight. Yeah. And so he's. I think I think for him it's it's a big game. Yeah. And it's the first game, so it's big for everybody. Um, you know, the last time they played, they won. It seemed like it was a little bit of a struggle. But remember, it was coming on the heels of multiple big games. And I think BYU kind of sure. uh, took a breath and just did what they needed to do. Jaron didn't even play right, last year right. in the game. And I, and I think so So it's closer than probably those two teams were last year. They've got a ton of talent. That's a, that's a big one. I agree. Baylor, I think, because this is – I feel like Baylor's going to be a longstanding rival. And because it's the only team that really physically beat BYU up last year. And BYU was shorthanded in that game. So I think they go into that one thinking, we need to prove to everybody in the Big 12 that we're at the same level as these guys, and we can, in the trenches, stand, stand man to man and, and beat up these guys. And I think Baylor loses some real key people, especially in the back seven of their defense. So I think it's a game BYU can win. I think that's really important. But I don't, when we're talking about rankings, I don't think it's close. I think Boise State oh, is man. the game. And there's just so many reasons for that. Not only did they lose, and it's recent, so there's recency that, that, like, it's last year, right? And it's a game where BYU beat the heck out of them all over the field, outgained them, ran the ball. Like, they did everything they're supposed to do to win except for the big, big stat that I think is more important than any other in football, minus four in turnover Turnovers, margin, right? Bleh. And they just kept putting the ball on the ground and giving them short fields. And, and so, so, in my opinion, that was a giveaway game. Those hurt more than the Baylor, the Baylor game last year. You go back and look at the film and you go, oh, man, just we weren't where we were supposed to be. We got pushed around a little bit. We didn't execute this. That's a really good football team. They were, man, how good are they in a the secondary? Wow, how good is their, how good are their backers? Wow, how physical are they up front? We've got to get better to beat them. Then you go back and watch the Boise State film and you go, what the heck were we doing in that game? How the heck do we lose that game? That football team is not as good as our football team and haven't been. But they had Hank Bachmeyer, Blaine. And Hank's, Hank's a good quarterback. <laughs> He's a good player. But, but BYU let them into that game with turnovers. Yeah. And yeah. it wasn't like, hey, all of them were these giant hits that separated people from the ball. They were careless with the football. And, so, and it's recent. It's last year. You guys have already outlined how much it cost to BYU. Could be millions of dollars because they, that, that could have been the difference to being a New Year's Six. And You're nine. looking at 11 and 1. Right. With the only loss to Baylor. Let's not yeah, talk the, pack, about it. the Big 12 champs. So An acceptable I, I think loss. that that one, and yeah. now add on to that, they're not going to play him. And this is a good regional rivalry. And BYU should be grateful to Boise State for partnering with them over this Independence time. I've got a lot of gratitude for Boise State. So, but they're kind of like brothers to BYU. 
And you want to beat your brother bad, right? Especially if you're not going to see him for a while. Mm -hmm. Like the fact that BYU just beat Utah and they don't play him this year is awesome. And they don't play him next year either. Right? That's awesome. They've got to sit on that thing for three years. We're going to play right? in a bowl game against each other. You I see. think like this year? Like 2015. <laughs> no, we're going to do year. it again. <laughs> this year, BYU and Utah are going to face each other in New Year's Six Bowl. How about that? Oh, that, that, that would, would be, that be epic. So, but it, it stings more when you don't play for a while. And so this Boise... It's, it's BYU's brother. Let's face it. They've been a good brother. you got to beat your brother. Yep. And, and now they're not going to play him for a while, so you got to let your brother just sit on that thing for a while. This game is huge. And they proved you know, the year before they can go up on the blue turf and, and they manhandled Boise State up there. That was more indicative of who BYU is than the turnover game last year. Well, That's B for me the one. BYU manhandled Boise State so much in 2020 that it took its quarterback. Yeah. Yeah. Cade you know. Finnegan. You're, yeah, with, you're, like, you know, I you're with us now. I just watched that nonsense. I want to be down there. Yeah, get me <laughs> out of here. <laughs> Blaine Fowler's on BYU Sports Nation. Camp starts next week, mm -hmm. 39 days away from the first game. Yes. What are your biggest question marks about this BYU team going into camp? Because we've waxed on about how solid they are in so many places. What's, what's your biggest question mark? Line, linebacker is, is a, such a key to run stopping, and his run, stop, run stopping is the number one goal of this defense every year. And remember, in the Baylor game, they did a, bit, a poor job of stop, stopping the run. In some of the games they've lost over the last couple of years, it's been their inability to stop the run. They were decimated at linebacker last year. Been watching the guys in offseason. I think Peyton's back to full speed. Keenan is healthy, but I feel like when you have a knee injury, it's a two-step process. It's the physical healing. And the doctor's saying, there's nothing wrong with that. Now go. And getting out there in practice for the first time going full speed and trusting in your mind that you're healthy. So he's got to – I'm, I'm going to watch him and key on him and fall to see if he's going to make that transition and be 100% back. Because when he's 100% back, and you have both he and Peyton, and Ben Bywater a year older, and two of these guys, this is a great run-stopping group of backers. They were all hurt down the stretch last year. But I think – Peely is the downhill, nasty guy that will go just stop people and set the tone against the run. I, you, you have to have him healthy to have a special year. And then I'm really interested to watch the depth and see how that develops You know, with, with uh, Josh Wilson. That, that whole group that is behind Morgan Piper, and they have some guys that play situationally when they're in, against spread teams and that. How does that depth develop? Because if they have a rash of injuries again, can they survive that? Can they play better? That's the one position I'm really isoing on during fall camp. Where's Chaz Ayu going to be? Because we, we've been waiting for Chaz to kind of be this star, right? And he can be. We just need to see him, I guess, healthy for a full season. And, you know, we just talked about this two-step process. I feel like for Chaz, every time he gets healthy in both of those aspects, so he, he's healthy physically, then he goes out, and then you see him just make progress, and then you go, okay, this is the physical guy with all the instincts we're talking about. He's flying to the ball. Then he has another injury. Then he starts that whole process over again where he rehabs. Then he comes back, and then can he trust it? And then once he trusts it, then he's injured again. We, we have never seen the full capability of Chaz Ayu in his career at BYU yet. Super unfortunate. Yeah, yeah which, which yeah. Is, is terrible. I, I feel like, go back, we, we had another guy, Jordan Pendleton, that was here, who I felt Jordan was a big-time NFL prospect, and we just couldn't keep Jordan Pendleton healthy enough to ever – he had some times where he was healthy long enough that we went, yes, that's an NFL guy right there. But, but he kind of went back and forth with injuries and struggled with injuries, and we never really saw him um, the way he could be. And he should have been an NFL guy. I, I feel like, like Chaz, we've never really seen who he can be. I feel like his instincts are really good. Um, you, you know, watch him, he just flows to the football. He – he, he just is a natural at taking the right angles and being in the right spot. Um, but to play the game, you got to be healthy, and that's the problem. So we'll watch Chaz and see how that goes with him as well. All right. You've answered all the tough questions, Blaine. Now we'll let you prepare for after further review, and it's going to be a doozy tonight. We'll get ready. We're going to do before. Um, Nix and I are going to do buddy curls. <laughs> nice. So that we look Jack. <laughs> you you say, always did. No, we were going to do it with McCann, but it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> because... If there's nothing there that you can actually pump up, <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. Oh. That's, that's, I'm never going to hear the end of that. We Why? love Dave. Sometimes I say mean things that I shouldn't. Yeah, the host control. <laughs> 7 Eastern on the BYU TV app. <laughs> Buddy oh. curl. Oh, Blaine, great to have you with us. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Blaine. Coming up, more of your response about BYU's biggest revenge game this season. And flex on this. Was this last BYU athletic year an anomaly or a new norm?
We discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Dexter & Dexter is a full-service law firm offering a wide range of legal services. Since 1995, we have helped more than 20,000 Utahns both to navigate life's challenges and to make the most of life's opportunities. From auto accidents to criminal defense and from bankruptcy to family law, we are passionate about shouldering your burdens. To learn more about scheduling a no-obligation consultation, visit DexterLaw.com. Welcome to a partnership where customer experience comes first. It's our focus. It's your expectation. We provide support to those that go the extra mile for all of us. Supplying products, training, and service for generations. Learn more at BradyIndustries.com. BYU TV has let the dogs out with a full lineup of stories featuring your favorite canines. Simply download the free BYU TV app to watch movies and shows about pups that'll make you laugh, hounds that'll make you cry, and pooches that bring families together. Hungry for more? Catch thousands of satisfying shows you and your family can enjoy together on the free BYU TV app. Start streaming today. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. Hey, interact with the show, get some content throughout the day. Follow BYU Sports Nation on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and TikTok. He is Jerem Jordan. I am Spencer Linton. We are in Studio C, and it is time to whip it. Cougar Whip Round presented by Maersk, your e-commerce logistics shipping partner. ESPN's Bill Connolly tweeted a newspaper clipping. If you're under 25, you don't know what that is. <laughs> from 1993, with a projection from Mike Kern of the Daily News on what college football expansion may look like. It had BYU and Colorado headed to the Pac-10. What does the world look like with BYU and the Pac-12, not Utah in expansion? I can't even fathom that alternate universe, Jim. In the 90s like that. Because BYU was never a fit for the Pac-10 at the time based on what BYU stands for and... It was on the field. But on the field, sure. Yeah, yeah. So it made sense on the on the football field, athletically, but everything else, it was just like, it just didn't fit. And so I always kind of, as a teenager, more pushed BYU to the Big 12. It's like, yeah, BYU, put BYU in the Big 12. I've always felt that way. I wish it weren't that way, but man, in that alternate universe, It'd have, been, it'd have been fun for BYU to be in the Pac-10 for the last 20, you know, 30 years, right? That would have been fun. There would have been a lot of uh, epic games with random teams. And Re I mean, obviously, renewing rivalries with Arizona and Arizona State, which were old whack partners. Yeah, and whatever with those guys. Utah gets invited in, and that rivalry continues in 2011. Like, it'd, well, it'd be do, fun. Do they expand and even invite Utah? Who knows? Right? Yeah, is that do what keeps Utah to? out? So is, is, is that what you're thinking? Like, if BYU is there, Utah doesn't they, get in? Would they have needed to expand at all? Interesting. I don't know. Interesting. ESPN's Chris Lowe released his 2022 college football schedule superlatives and awarded BYU most interesting schedule. Is this the most interesting schedule of BYU's independence era? I did like 2013 a lot at Wisconsin, at Notre Dame. There were seven power fives on that schedule in all, one in a bowl game. That was pretty interesting. Texas I mean, was on that schedule. Texas as well, right? Um, I do like this one, though, because you have SEC and Provo for just the third time ever, second team ever. You have Notre Dame, Vegas. You have Baylor and Oregon. You have Stanford. Like, you still have Boise State and Utah State. I think this year's pretty interesting. Perhaps it is the most interesting. It is interesting, and I feel like it's the most balanced independent schedule that BYU yeah. has had. Only took 12 years. <laughs> there's, there's been there's been imbalance in a good way like last year was imbalanced in a good way for sure. BYU playing Vegas Arizona Arizona State Utah and so on like that was good that helped BYU get out to a strong start sure I mean BYU still got a couple of big time games in September but 
those are bookended by an opener at USF, and then you have Wyoming and Utah State. BYU so it's not four straight Power Fives to open the season. The first five games, BYU leaves the, the state twice, but one of those is eight. So it's pretty favorable. For yeah, I, I like the balance. It, it is very interesting. It's eclectic. You have a little bit of everything in As it. As all things should be, balance. Right. Fair enough. Big 12 Theory put out this graphic showing the average percentage of home capacity at football games in the new Big 12 last year. You had 97.1%, which is impressive. Good enough for fourth place. Should BYU fans be proud of that number, or do you feel like the room for improvement is to focus? This is fine. Number four is fine. Considering what Cincinnati was last year, Cincinnati went to the college football playoff. They were unbelievable. They're their best team The last ever. two so, years they were in a Yeah, they were selling out every game, yeah. not shockingly. Baylor were the Big 12 champs. Sugar Bowl champs, also amazing. So not a shocker that they were 99%. Iowa State, there's not much else to do in Ames. Ames is a great that doesn't, college. That doesn't Ames mean a, you just Ames show up. Ames is a though. great college town, and they rally around that university. Ames is a great college town. So not shocked to see that. Fourth is fine. Like third or fourth, great. Of course, BYU wants to be 100% home capacity every game. Maybe the Big 12 pushes them back up there. We'll see. Capacity percentage is overrated. BYU had more fans than all these clowns. Okay. In, the total in, number of Yes. Because if we did this with basketball, St. Mary's would be number one. Or Gonzaga would. But Sell then out. St. Mary's. But the gym, small. No, BYU uh, prides itself on having a massive stadium and filling it largely. That's fine with me. It's In the Big 12, good. hopefully there'll be less 8-15 games as well, which factors into this. I call these guys clowns. They're about to be our brothers in arms. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But like, yes, let's go. You're about to play late nine, bro. Let's go. CBS Sports ranked the top athletic programs of the 2021-2022 athletic calendar year. Had BYU at number 17 overall. Was this last year an anomaly, or should we get used to this? Is this the new norm for BYU being a top 20 overall athletic program? The hope is that it's the new norm uh, and that BYU can sustain this. Uh, you know, historically and statistically, it was probably an anomaly. But I think we think that BYU can keep this up to some degree. Is BYU going to produce national champs individually in track and field and cross country every year? We hope so. We hope men's basketball can get better. Um, will That's women's soccer thing. go to the College Cup every year? No. Last year was the first time, but we hope, hey, you build off that. But men's volleyball will be better, too. Men's volleyball was uh, pretty bad last year. It was a rebuild, right? Um, so, yeah, BYU's athletics always pretty good. The hope is that BYU can approximate or exceed this here soon. We're sure. Yeah, what teams do we expect to have a drop-off? Not many. Not Maybe many. women's soccer. Maybe soccer. Yeah. Not many. Women's volleyball, we expect sweet exactly. Every, right? exactly. And we expect basketball to be better. Women's hoops. Keep going to the tournament. Yep. Okay, Jim Fredette and uh, the money team play in the second round of the basketball tournament tonight. Over under 29 and a half points for Jimmer. Oh, I think that Jimmer's going to be a little more generous, so I'm going to go 28. 28 points for Jimmer. Jimmer, be a little more selfish. Bachio Gewo. That's uh, Chinese for pass me the dang ball. You like him okay. You like him for 30 tonight? I like him for 30 plus. 30 for 30, yeah, 30 Scott. Scott. Put it up. Fair enough. Okay, coming up, who among you is getting today's Elite Voice? Today? And which revenge games do you personally have circled on BYU's schedule? Where are my your East Carolina people at? This is BYU Sports Nation. <laughs> Down go the Pirates! My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150 the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork.
Do you not know the groom's name? I missed it on our first date, and it's way too late to ask. Whenever you experience something funny, the first thing you want to do is, like, share it with your loved ones. Seeing that comedy, like, helped us through things, that like, we want to use that to help other people in a way. We had one kid whose make-a-wish was to come to Studio C. It made me be, like, these goofy sketches uh, mean a lot to people. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. Oh, picturesque Provo. Join us Friday for the final BYU Sports Nation special of the summer as we look back at the 2020 BYU football season performing in a pandemic. Friday, noon Eastern on BYU TV and BYU Radio. Oh, 11 wins was fun, wasn't it? Maybe. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. We're live in Studio C. Our question of the day what is the biggest revenge game on BYU football's 2022 schedule? So many opinions coming in. We you love it. State. I said Baylor. Varying opinions. I like this. Blaine Fowler said Boise State. You know, I can't get over the potential millions lost. 11 win season. Yeah, maybe, a, maybe a spot in the New Year's Six. That was BYU tough. Beats Boise State. Ah. Okay. Blaine Swallow on Instagram says Baylor. He agrees with you, Jerem. Mm. It's home opener and a big time matchup. We, BYU, want to start the season, last season of Independence, with a statement that BYU can play with the big boys of the Big 12. I, I think it is a big game in that regard. Like, BYU wants to beat the one Big 12 team on its schedule to feel like, hey, we, we got revenge for that game last year. We split. Beat we're, the we're defending Big 12 we champs. Beat the champs, right? The champs coming to town, home opener. Um, that's going to be a really, really fun game in week two. Just throw it to Puka Nakua. Puka had a monster game yeah. that day. Oh, man. Yeah. I think he's going to have like three or four of those games this year. Country underscore baller 94 on Instagram says. Is this you, Bryant Reeves? Boise State. We should have crushed them. If BYU hadn't lost, they'd be only a one-loss team and very much in the New Year's Six conversation at 100%. the end of last season. 100%. Michael Croxall on Instagram says, it all starts with BYU at USF. Okay. The team is focused on winning this game. Not only because it's the first game, but because of what happened last time BYU played in that stadium. Yeah, I, that was that was a tough loss. Uh, that was part of a really bad stretch for BYU. That At, was the bottoming out moment in the Kalani era to me. Yes, I agree. Um, and then then you come back home and you're two and four. You start and, a five game win streak by beating nationally. Because Zach State. Wilson breaks his thumb in game five against Toledo. BYU played this brutal stretch of four straight Power Five start the year. It was really tough. That was a tough schedule. Toledo, you lose, broken thumb. Jaron Hall essentially comes in and throws a Hail Mary. Then, then the next week starts the USF, really strong start. Baylor Romney gets BYU into the red zone a bunch of times. They end up losing. Baylor starts the Boise State game. It's two and four. At that point, in hindsight, we look back and go, BYU loses that game. Yeah. Is Kalani Satake still the coach, you know, years later? Like, that was a pivotal moment for him. Aaron Roderick becomes the primary play caller in that game. Yes. And his, his calls, there were two calls in particular on fourth downs that were incredible. BYU had, went for it at midfield, remember, to try and ice the game. Uh, and they got it. Kairos Tonga in there uh, on offense. That was a huge game in the story of BYU football and kind of this, this modern run that BYU has done the last couple of years. That is a huge moment. The USF loss and the Boise State win. Sure. And now some of you are saying, what do you mean bottoming out? 2017 was a bottoming out in and of itself. Yes, but Kalani... BYU was about to do it again. Exactly. Exactly right. Kalani, and Kalani had his people in place in 2019. In 2017, that wasn't necessarily the case. Like, he'd been granted, like, okay, he went and got Jeff Grimes. He had his offensive coordinator. Like, he had opportunity to, to make moves. He did, and BYU still wasn't producing the wins. Yes. And it was like, it was crunch time, baby, and they responded five straight wins. And 2018 was this sort of uh, good for a freshman year. Remember, when freshmen do something, it's good because they're freshmen, not good because they're everybody, right? You get graded on a curve on that one. BYU switches quarterbacks midway to beats Wisconsin. Whoa, what was that? That was amazing. Um, and then you switch quarterbacks. Nice run down the stretch. You're up 20, but lose to Utah. That was disappointing. Great bowl game performance by Zach Wilson, obviously, 18 for 18. So then you enter 2019. It's like, all right, Zach's a sophomore. We know he's a starter. Now what? Tough stretch, but you beat USC in Tennessee. You're like, wow, those are two great wins. Then broken thumb, USF, Boy State. Like that, that lose situation. Lose to Toledo. Lose to USF back-to-back -back weeks. After beating USC in Tennessee. That was like, rough. It's like, why are we losing to them? That was rough. But the, 
that was tough. How do you beat Tennessee on the road but lose to USF? Well, you're a young team. Because we look back at that and we go, you know who was a young left tackle on that team? Brady Christensen. And Dax Milne's a receiver. And Tyler Algier's a young running back. So literally is still switching between linebacker and running back. That group ends yeah. up being the veteran group that produced 2020, 20, 21, and now 22 Blake as well. Freeland got his first start against Boise State in 2019. And he told us on Media Day that uh, he, you know, he, had, he had dressed for one game. <laughs> Now he's a first round. Welcome talent. to the show. Wow. So yes, that 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 is this pivotal moment um, in the recent history of BYU is that Boise State game in 2019. Sure. And Baylor Romney, his greatest moment was was that game. Now again, Michael Croxall talking about USF. Like if I'm being completely honest, the USF game is sneaky. It is sneaky because they return a bunch of their team from last year and they played in moments BYU tough in Provo. Yes. And they've got. Jerry Volhannon, the quarterback Baylor. who started for Baylor last year when Baylor beat BYU, he transferred to USF. They've got two good quarterbacks. They've got a ton of speed, ton of talent, and BYU has never played well in Florida, especially... Well, one time. One time. That was December, a bowl game. It was the last time. This is humidity. This is season open. This is interesting. This seems too veteran to lose that game. I agree. It, it, I, I agree. I just think... Uh, what, I think maybe what you're getting at is, hey, this might be closer. Than yes, that. that's that what, what I'm saying. saying? Okay. Closer than people sure. think. Just win the game and then come home and play Baylor. Let's go. All right. Okay, continue to uh, weigh in on social. Coming up, who gets today's Rise and Shadow? And staying with our theme of the day, why not revisit the top five revenge wins all time Ooh. in BYU football history? This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Delta Airlines, keep climbing. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. Trio Orem Senior Living believes in empowering seniors to live life to the fullest. We help eliminate stress out of daily life when you live at Trio. Less time focusing on housework means you can socialize at one of our many events with safety in mind, of course. And did we mention our spacious apartments with modern amenities? Learn more about setting up a private tour at TrioOrem.com. We're getting ready for the Ultimate Puppy Championship. Yeah, maybe I could enter Marley. You need two other dogs to make a team. We're going to be a team? Always know your enemy. What enemy? I was thinking if I could train Marley for this competition, then Mom would let me get my own dog. Is BYU football with Kalani Satake and Greg Rubel. When I was younger, I was a better dancer. Don't show any more dancing on me. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> I think we've developed some really good habits the last couple weeks and, and looking to step it up again. A lot of great things can happen when they care. Not bad. That's good stuff. Hey. Yay. Yeah, thank you for ending on that one. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Brigham Young University Sports Nation is on demand. Download the BYU TV and BYU Radio app today or download the podcast on your favorite podcast platform and subscribe rate. And I'm glad we don't call it that. <laughs> Wordy. <laughs> like the USTFCCC. Oh, alongside Jerem Jordan, I'm Spencer Linton. It is time for Top 5 Tuesday presented okay. by Delta Airlines. Keep climbing. Let's stay with the theme of the show. Top 5 revenge wins all time for BYU football. This feels good. Yes. Number 5, 2007 versus UCLA in the Las Vegas Bowl. BYU had lost to UCLA in the Rose Bowl that season. They played twice in the same season. 
Uh, Max Hall, a couple of passing touchdowns. Of course, the blocked field goal. The time expired by Ethan Manu Maleuna. Uh huh. Joey held on for a 17 to 16 win. Really putting the staple on back to back amazing seasons. 06, 07. Boom! Got his big paw up there. I'm underneath the field goal post and totally missed it with the camera because I did not expect a block. I love that we call it a paw. That's his big paw yeah, up got there. It. He doesn't have a hand, he has a paw. 2006 at TCU represents Quattro, Quattro number four. Nice. This footage is so bad. At TCU, <laughs> BYU had lost 51-50 in Provo the year before. Controversy all over that loss. So the next year, BYU's yeah. first Mountain West Conference game in Fort Worth. BYU's 1-2 at the time. Mm -hmm. They knock off the 17th ranked Horn Frogs. John Beck, 321 passing yards, three touchdowns. And how about David Nixon's key strip sack fumble recovery early in the game that really set the tone? So big, so big. This was on versus, and it's uh, grainy. Number three, 94 at Notre Dame. BYU got blown out in 92 and 93, but in 94 it was not going to happen. John Walsh, Jamal Willis, a freshman, Kalani Sataki, and others. The number 17 Notre Dame, 21-14. By the way, that 94 squad, 10 and 3, they beat Notre Dame and Oklahoma. How about that? One of my favorite BYU uniform combinations right there, the black trim around the blue numbers. Number two, 84, Baylor. The Cougars got their vengeance after losing in 1983. Lone loss in 83, so they put up a 47-13 shellacking of the Bears behind six touchdown passes from Robbie Bosco, 363 yards through the air. And yes, it was part of BYU's perfect national championship season. Beautiful. Number one, recency bias. <laughs> 2021 versus Utah. Uh, down goes the nine-game losing streak. 18th ranked Utes. The day after BYU accepts the Big 12 invite, the Cougars won 26-17, 241 yards from Jaron Hall, plus two turnover margin for BYU, leading to a 10-3 and season. What a night. The cameras and, and the uh, video quality are just a little bit better Just here. a little bit better than versus. Yeah. <laughs> Kalani's going crazy. I mean, what a night. That is the number one revenge win. There's some other great revenge wins we didn't get to. I know. It was Holy a hotly God. contested discussion for the man, top five. Man, oh, man. Yeah. All right, our question of the day. What's the biggest revenge game on BYU football schedule this season? Our elite voice of the day presented by Sundance Mountain Resort comes from Alec Watson on Instagram. He says, Boise State, because I'm still hurting from last year, and I took that personally. And I took that personally, Michael Jordan, in the yes, last dance. Yes. Uh, yeah, no, I get it. There's a lot of good candidates uh, on the, <laughs> the schedule this year. Jeez. Today's Rise and Shout Out presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We would like to give it to a couple of our former production assistants. Um, their grandpa, Verl Tolley, passed away. He was a 63-year season ticket holder for BYU football. That's a long time, 63 man. 63 years. He yeah. watched BYU Sports Nation every day. That's amazing. And uh, uh, his, his grandsons are Reggie and, and Tanner Lewis. We love them. They, they were fantastic here. Reggie still works for the NFL uh, Network. Uh, so he's doing great doing great well. things our thoughts with the uh, Lewis family great man Burl Tolley and our thanks to today's guest Blaine Fowler sorry to Dennis no time we had time for him yesterday yesterday but not today not today for Jerem I am Spencer shout out to Trent Whiting we'll see you tomorrow on BYU Sports Station go Cougs well played Spencer